Avoid this mistake if you want to live a fulfilling life. We often think that being kind, giving and agreeable are the keys to strong relationships and personal happiness. But what if I told you that these very traits, when taken to the extreme, could be your downfall? Yes, there's a fine line between being generous and letting others walk all over you, between caring for others and forgetting to care for yourself. It's a trap so many of us fall into without even realizing it, sacrificing our peace of mind for the approval of others, giving endlessly without setting boundaries and avoiding conflict just to keep the waters calm. The result? Burnout, resentment, and a life that feels more like a balancing act than a fulfilling journey. If you're tired of feeling stretched too thin, misunderstood, or unappreciated, stick around. In this video, we'll uncover the subtle mistakes that make us feel like we're losing ourselves in the name of kindness. From letting others use you to constantly seeking approval, we'll explore why these patterns form and how to break free from them. Ready to reclaim your time, energy and self-worth? Let's dive in and unravel the secrets to living a life where kindness empowers you, not drains you. Number one, taking on too much. Ah, the joy of helping someone in need. A truly heartwarming experience, isn't it? Picture this, a friend mentions their moving day struggles and without hesitation, you volunteer to help. It feels good in the moment, doesn't it? You're the hero, the reliable one, the person everyone counts on. But what happens next? The warm glow of kindness often fades into the cold, hard realization that you've overcommitted. Stoicism teaches us that while kindness is a virtue, it must be balanced by self-awareness. Overcommitting not only depletes your resources, but also leads to unintended consequences. Think about it. How many times have you said yes when every fiber of your being screamed no? That sinking feeling when you realize you've stretched yourself too thin isn't just stress. It's a sign you've ignored your own boundaries. Take a moment to reflect. Remember the times when you juggled too many responsibilities, helping a co-worker meet a deadline, attending your niece's recital and taking on that weekend DIY project. By the end of the day, you were probably running on fumes, unable to fully enjoy any of the activities. It's a familiar story, isn't it? Now, let's delve deeper. Why do we often bite off more than we can chew? Is it the fear of disappointing others, the desire to appear reliable, or perhaps a deep-seated need to feel valued. The Stoics believed in the importance of living in harmony with nature, your nature. Knowing your limits isn't a sign of weakness, it's an act of wisdom. Like a teacup that can only hold so much before spilling over, your capacity to give has limits. Imagine if you approached life differently. What if you prioritized quality over quantity in your acts of kindness? What if, instead of saying, I'll help you move all weekend, you said, I can help pack boxes for a couple of hours? This shift not only protects your energy, but also ensures that your efforts are meaningful and sustainable. As you ponder this, let nostalgia wash over you. Recall a time when you helped someone and it truly made a difference. Maybe it was a simple gesture, a few hours spent with a lonely neighbor or a heartfelt note to a friend in need. Those moments didn't overwhelm you, did they? They left you feeling fulfilled, not drained. This is the kind of balance Stoicism advocates. Curious yet? The next time someone asks for your help, challenge yourself to pause and reflect. Can you genuinely give your best without compromising your own well-being? What might change if you embraced the idea of measured kindness? Number two, always trying to make everyone happy. Ah, the sweet allure of approval, the warm smiles, the reassuring nods, the comforting thought that everyone likes you. It's a heady feeling, isn't it? But let's take a step back. Have you ever laughed at a joke you didn't find funny or agreed to plans that secretly filled you with dread? 
chances are you have. The desire to make everyone happy often masquerades as kindness, but it's more insidious than it seems. Stoicism teaches us that true virtue lies in authenticity, not in pleasing others at the expense of our own values. Yet the need to be liked is universal, isn't it? It's human nature to seek connection, to want to be seen and appreciated. Think back to your own life. How many times have you bent over backward to avoid conflict or gain approval? Remember that family dinner where you stayed silent during a heated debate, nodding along even when you disagreed? Or the time you went along with a friend's suggestion, even though it inconvenienced you? Those moments may have spared you immediate discomfort, but they left a lingering dissatisfaction, didn't they? Let's explore why. Stoic philosophy tells us that the opinions of others are beyond our control. Worrying about them is like trying to catch the wind, futile and exhausting. Instead of chasing fleeting approval, Stoics urge us to ground ourselves in what we can control our thoughts, actions and choices. Picture this, Tim, a well-meaning guy, wore an uncomfortable shirt for an entire day simply because it was a gift from a friend. He didn't want to hurt their feelings, but in doing so, he ignored his own. The irony, his friend didn't even notice. How often do we sacrifice our comfort, peace or values for people who might not even realize it? Now, let nostalgia take hold. Think of a time when you stood your ground, when you said no to something that didn't align with your values or made a decision that truly felt right for you. How empowering was that? That sense of self-respect, of living authentically, is what the Stoics championed. Curiosity begs the question, what if you let go of the need to please everyone? What if you embrace the fact that not everyone will like you and that's okay? How might your life change if you focused on being true to yourself rather than juggling the expectations of others? Number three, thinking you can change people. The idea of changing someone for the better, doesn't it sound noble? Imagine extending a hand to guide a friend out of a toxic relationship or offering advice to a sibling stuck in a cycle of bad decisions. It feels good to think that your kindness can spark transformation, doesn't it? But here's the harsh truth, you can't change people. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what is within our control, our own actions and choices. Others' decisions, no matter how much we care, remain firmly outside that circle. And yet, how often do we exhaust ourselves trying to steer someone else's ship? Let's reminisce. Remember that friend who always seemed to date the wrong people? You listened to their heartaches, offered advice, even tried to set them up with someone you thought was perfect. But time and again, they made the same mistakes. It was frustrating, wasn't it? You wanted so badly to help, but your efforts felt like shouting into the wind. The Stoics would tell you this, every individual is on their own journey. You can guide, support and encourage, but you cannot walk their path for them. Trying to do so only leads to frustration for both of you. Think of it like this. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Now recall a moment when you stepped back and let someone find their way. Maybe it was difficult at first, watching them stumble, knowing you could help. But eventually they found their footing, didn't they? That's the beauty of self-discovery, and it's something we all need to experience firsthand. Here's a thought to spark your curiosity. What if you shifted your focus? Instead of trying to change others, what if you poured that energy into being the best version of yourself? How might your actions inspire change naturally, without force or expectation? The answers might surprise you. Number four, letting others use you. At first, being the go-to person for others might feel rewarding. They trust you, rely on you, and see you as dependable. Who wouldn't feel good about that? But somewhere along the way, you start noticing a pattern. Your generosity isn't reciprocated. Your time, energy, and kindness become things people take for granted. And before you know it, 
you're left wondering, are they truly appreciating me or just using me? Stoicism teaches us to approach relationships with balance and wisdom. Kindness is a virtue, but it should never come at the expense of your dignity or peace of mind. The key lies in discernment, knowing when your efforts are genuine acts of service and when they're being exploited by others. Think back to a time when you went out of your way to help someone, only to be met with indifference. Maybe you stayed late at work to assist a colleague with a project, sacrificing your own plans in the process. Or perhaps you lent money to a friend, expecting gratitude, but receiving nothing but silence when the repayment date passed. It stings, doesn't it? The Stoics would ask us to reflect on the nature of our giving. Is it motivated by genuine goodwill, or are we unconsciously seeking validation? Often, people allow themselves to be used because they fear rejection or crave approval. They say yes to avoid conflict, hoping their sacrifice will strengthen relationships. But this isn't true generosity, it's self-neglect. Now, let's get nostalgic. Remember a time when someone truly valued your help. Maybe it was a mentor who genuinely appreciated your assistance, or a close friend who expressed heartfelt gratitude. Those moments stand out because they were mutual exchanges of respect and kindness. This is the kind of dynamic we should aim for, where our efforts are acknowledged and not taken for granted. Number 5. Forgetting to care for yourself. It feels good to care for others, doesn't it? To lend a hand, offer a listening ear, or simply be there for someone who needs you. But what happens when you give so much to others that there's nothing left for yourself? It's a slippery slope, one where your own needs get pushed aside, leaving you drained and unfulfilled. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-care, not as an act of selfishness, but as a necessary foundation for living a virtuous life. How can you truly help others if you're running on empty? Neglecting your own well-being isn't noble, it's unsustainable. Think of your own life. How often have you skipped meals, lost sleep, or cancelled your own plans to accommodate someone else? Maybe it was a last-minute favor for a friend or a work deadline that demanded more of your time than you had to give. Each time, you told yourself it was worth it. But was it? Over time, these small sacrifices add up, leaving you feeling resentful and depleted. Let's revisit those moments when you prioritized yourself. Perhaps it was a weekend getaway where you disconnected from responsibilities or a day spent indulging in your favorite hobbies. How did that feel? Refreshing, right? Those instances remind us that taking care of ourselves isn't just important, it's essential. Curiosity might lead you to ask, what if I made self-care a non-negotiable part of my life? How would that affect my relationships, my work, and my overall sense of well-being? Imagine a life where your needs and those of others are in harmony, creating a balance that benefits everyone involved. Number six, avoiding disagreements at all costs. Conflict, it's a word that makes many people uncomfortable, the tension, the raised voices, the awkward silences afterward. It's no wonder that some people will do anything to avoid it. But what if avoiding disagreements isn't the solution? What if, by dodging conflict, you're actually creating bigger problems for yourself and others? The Stoics understood that disagreements are an inevitable part of life. They're not something to fear, but opportunities to grow. By facing conflicts with courage and composure, we can strengthen relationships and deepen our understanding of others. Think back to a time when you avoided a disagreement. Maybe you smiled and nodded during a family discussion, even though you strongly disagreed. Or perhaps you let a co-worker take credit for your idea because speaking up felt too risky. Those moments of avoidance might have spared you immediate discomfort, but they often leave a lingering sense of regret, don't they? Now. Contrast that with a time when you faced a disagreement head-on, calmly and respectfully. Perhaps it was a tough conversation with a friend where you expressed your feelings honestly. 
or maybe it was standing your ground on a matter of principle, those experiences, while challenging, likely left you feeling empowered and respected. Curiosity beckons what if I embrace disagreements as opportunities for growth? What if I could navigate conflicts without fear, using them to strengthen my relationships and clarify my values? The answers might surprise you, offering a path to greater authenticity and connection. Number 7. Giving too much. Generosity is a beautiful thing. It's what builds connections, fosters trust, and makes the world a kinder place. But when generosity becomes excessive, it can backfire. Giving too much of your time, energy or resources can leave you feeling unappreciated and drained. So, where do we draw the line? Stoic philosophy emphasizes moderation in all things, including kindness. While it's virtuous to help others, overextending yourself isn't sustainable. It's like pouring water from a pitcher that never gets refilled. Eventually, there's nothing left to give. Think about a time when you gave too much. Maybe you volunteered for every committee at work, leaving no time for yourself. Or perhaps you constantly prioritized a friend's needs over your own, only to realize they rarely reciprocated. Over time, these patterns lead to burnout and resentment, a far cry from the joy generosity is meant to bring. Now, reflect on a moment of balanced giving. Perhaps it was helping a friend move, but setting clear limits on your availability or donating to a cause you care about without feeling pressured to give more than you could afford. Those experiences likely left you feeling fulfilled, not exhausted. Curiosity might prompt you to explore how can I give in a way that's meaningful and sustainable? What boundaries could I set to ensure my generosity doesn't come at the expense of my well-being? The answers lie in finding harmony between giving to others and caring for yourself. Number eight, needing others' approval. Ah, the comfort of approval, those nods of agreement, the smiles of validation, the reassuring words that say, you're doing great. It's a feeling we all crave to some extent, but what happens when the need for approval becomes a driving force in your life? Stoicism teaches us to seek validation from within not from others. The opinions of others are beyond our control and hinging our happiness on them is a recipe for disappointment. True confidence comes from aligning our actions with our values, not from chasing external approval. Think about it. How many times have you posted something on social media, eagerly checking for likes and comments, or stayed silent in a meeting, fearing your idea might be dismissed? These moments reveal how deeply the need for approval can influence our actions, often to our detriment. Now recall a time when you acted without seeking approval. Maybe it was pursuing a passion project that others didn't understand, or standing up for your beliefs in the face of opposition. Those moments, while challenging, likely brought a sense of pride and authenticity that no amount of external validation could match. Curiosity arises, what if I let go of the need for approval? What if I focused on living authentically, guided by my own values and principles? How might that change the way I approach relationships, work and life as a whole? The answers may lead you to a more empowered and fulfilling existence. You've made it to the end. Drop a hundred in the comments if you're part of the rare 0.01% who finished this video. This shows you're committed to not just hearing the advice, but acting on it. If you're serious about transforming your life, take the next step and subscribe to the channel. By doing so, you'll stay in the loop with more valuable insights that can help you create lasting change. Remember, true kindness starts with setting boundaries, taking care of yourself and being authentic. If you found value in today's video, hit that like button and share it with someone who needs to hear it. Let's continue this journey together, building a community that values self-respect, growth and balance.
don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on our next discussion. Stay wise, stay kind, and stay true to yourself.